Welcome to the Change Leadership Conversations. Today I have with me Mark Edgar. He's the chief herder at the Goat Rodeo Project. He is what he likes to call a recovering CHRO. He has been a CHRO for over eight years, nine years at RSA, and he is now driving change and doing awesome things with the Goat Rodeo Project, which I'm excited to hear about. Welcome, Mark. Thanks, Yvonne. Great to be here. I'm excited to have you. The last time I met you, I said, Mark, we have to geek out. <laughs> we have to geek out on human-centered leadership, the new world of work, and so many other things. You spoke at one of our master classes early this year, and it was so interesting, some of the concepts you shared with us around a few of the C's of what it takes to have a human-centered leadership. And I hope we get to talk today about that. But let's start off with what is Gold Rodeo Project? Tell us about that. Yeah, I know it's exciting. It's it's great to be here, Ron, as I say. And it was a a pleasure to meet you at your your masterclass and looking forward to geeking out on this topic. So, um, you know, we should have a fun fun few minutes. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, Goat Rodeo Project is a... Interesting name, um, and I, I'm not sure whether I'm going to coin the phrase of being a goat herder or not yet. So it was, <laughs> it's a business that I founded uh, a couple of uh, just a couple of weeks ago, actually. So, so the timing with with everything going on is either very ideal or could be complicated. We will see. Um, mm-hmm. So the term goat rodeo is actually one of these urban dictionary slang terms, which actually means that something is going to become a train wreck. So the idea with a Goat Rodeo project is essentially that I will help people and organizations avoid their train wrecks. Uh, And so what I like to think I will do is really take 25 plus years of experience, as you mentioned, working in HR across a multiple number of sectors and really use that to help organizations understand where they are in an increasingly disruptive world and think about what they can do, think about changing that moving forward to make sure they've got the plans in place for their people and ultimately their organizations to thrive. Talking about train wreck, it feels as if we're going through a train wreck right now. (laughs) So that has really thrown people in all directions and everyone is trying to respond to this type of change. Organizations are trying to respond to the change. The government is trying to respond to the change. Individuals are trying to respond to the change. What's your take on what's happening and how can people really lead and drive change in a time such as this? Yeah, no, it's, it's, you're, you're right. I mean, it, we're facing significant change with, with COVID-19 and it's, you know, as everyone keeps saying it, this really is unprecedented. I think what's interesting is, as you touched on, is that it touches so many different levels. So there's mm-hmm. a, an individual level to this, an organizational level and, and a bigger kind of society and community level to it as well. And so. a global level to it as well. Um, Everyone's experiencing it at the same time, so across the globe. So I think it's a challenging time. I think there's lots of opportunity there still for organizations to think differently about this experience. I was talking to some CHROs a few days ago, and they had these very ambitious plans that they were pulling together, very sophisticated plans to think about how they're going to shift their people to work remotely. And these were plans that they were going to start this year and then roll out over the next couple of years and this long program. And in the circumstances, they managed to find that they had to shift to those things in literally just a matter of days. Mm. There's the opportunity to, in some ways, kind of question how we've been going about things and the way that we approach things. Do they add value? And I think we put so much, bring so much complexity to things sometimes that in a situation like COVID-19, where we're struck with such issues that we have to deal with in the moment, it actually gives us the opportunity to actually act with much more speed. And mm-hmm. so perhaps give us the, the opportunity to, to almost declutter some of the stuff that we do as well, perhaps. I know. When I look at the changes that are happening, one of the blogs I'm most looking forward to writing is saying, how should we lead and drive change? Is it a slow process or is this all showing us that anything is possible <laughs> when it comes to change? Because there's so many things that people are talking about or doing now that they would not have done in the past because they would have thought impossible to do it. And now we're in quotes being forced to work in new ways that we didn't think was possible and organizations may not have planned for. So talking about working in new ways possible, I know one of your interest areas is the new world of work. 
So tell us what the new world of work is and whether we're seeing it now already. I think we are. I think this is this is a, a huge experiment in some ways for the new world of work. So I think there's lots of elements that we're experiencing in this time. I think the most obvious one is is this idea of how people have demonstrated that they can work much more remotely. Uh, and that's not obviously something that impacts everybody, but has impacted the vast majority of the working population. So the fact that we can work, we can connect. I think in many cases, we're actually perhaps more productive than we would have been alternatively, I think is a big step forward. I think the the other interaction is certainly around technology and how that's helping us to connect. So as, as you would have read as well, imagine if we were in this situation pre the internet and how would we have, have kind of coped at that time in terms of maintaining a connection with people. So mm. I think technology has brought us a huge amount of benefit and value as well. And so for me, the, the, the new world of work isn't a, a kind of easy, simple answer, unfortunately. <laughs> it's about identifying a whole range of different things that are going on in the world and using that as an opportunity at both an individual, again, and an organizational level to think about what does that mean to our organization? How do we take all of these different disruptions going on, understand how they intersect and how do they then impact our organization? And there's no simple answer, unfortunately. It's not going to be the same for every company either. So I think the important thing is to really encourage organizations to take that time to, to reflect on where they are and think about project forward how some of these things are going to impact them. And I think this situation actually provides them with a great opportunity to do that. It does definitely provide a great opportunity to do that. And when I think about the new world of work, or I think about what COVID-19 is doing right now, for many people we know, yes, they're working from home. And for just as many people as they're working from home, there's so many people that are not working from home and unable to work from home because organizations weren't prepared for something like this. So it brings the question, being prepared. One of the key critical skills of any leader or change leader is being visionary, big picture thinking. How do you begin to prepare for the new world of work? You know, what are some of the tactical things people can do? Because it's easy to focus on the now because we need to resolve and firefight and this business as usual. How do we begin to also think about the future? What are some of the steps people can take to think of what the new world of work would look like? Yeah, it's a great question. And, it, and it's something that often people feel that they can't project forward because things are changing so quickly. So there is this kind of exponential level of change that we're all facing across so many different elements. Uh, but I, as I say, I think you can still deconstruct that. You mm. can think about your organization and where they are today and project forward. Think about what it is that you in some ways want to be when you grow up as an organization and use that as an opportunity to really track different elements that, that could impact how your organization moves forward and use that to, to really build a plan and prepare. Yeah. And, and that's not an easy thing to do. I think on occasion, you will need to bring in some help to really drive that information out and make sure that you're, you're drawing the right plan together. I think that can be a beneficial thing to get some external input to. Yeah. Because as an organization, if I think about the leadership teams I've been part of, you get so close to the day-to-day -day stuff, don't you? And you're really kind of dialed into what's going on now. And it can sometimes be helpful to, to have somebody who can help provide you with a, a kind of line of sight to something that's a bit longer term. But I think as individuals, we have the answers. And again, going back to COVID-19, I think we've demonstrated that as leaders the huge resilience we have and the adaptability that we have. I think we need to almost harness that energy and, and translate that into situations which encourage people to take a longer term view and use that same energy to plan for the future. Yeah, I like what you said earlier. This is going to definitely call on us as leaders to say, what do we need to start doing for the future? It's going to be a wake up call. It's going to make business continuity planning, not a conceptual thing anymore or theoretical thing. It's going to be a real thing because people have had to pull out their business continuity plans <laughs> that they keep on drawing and re-strategizing every year to say, what does business continuity mean? And what does um, the future of work even look like? How are things going to change? There's a lot of planning that is going to need to be done and a lot of budgeting yeah. to budget for resources to be able to do that kind of work because oftentimes you're always trying to balance budget and resource needs with immediate business needs and some of all of these things just feel a little bit iffy mm -hmm. <laughs> and a little bit futuristic and especially when you think about 
all of the AI, robotics, fourth industrial revolution, and biohacking, that all of those things seem very futuristic, but they're not seeming so futuristic right now. <laughs> no, exactly. And I, you know, I, I, love, I love your technical term, iffy, that some of these things can seem a bit... <laughs> it's hard to actually put sort of hard dollars to these things. What strikes me is that this has to become more of a continuous exercise. So this can't be something, and I would, you would extend this to, to actually think about change management and change leadership as well. I think, I think this is just how we have to be every day. And it can't be a process that has a kind of start and finish. It just needs to be an ongoing activity. And that's what I think leaders need to, to think about. And business continuity, therefore, just becomes another, another way in which we become more prepared. So I think there's a, a risk in, in putting too much kind of parameters around this in some respects. I think it's actually better to think about this as being the, the way in which we have to lead in this, in this world that is going to continue to change. Mm. When I think of who a change leader is, one of the first characteristics that comes to mind is being able to put people first, being able to put humans first, right. because humans make up the organization. Without humans and people... There is no organization. <laughs> That's the whole essence of an organization. And I know you are into human leadership. So tell us about that. I want to hear more. That was one of the things I wanted to geek out about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so leadership is a, I mean, it's a, a discipline in many respects. And, and there's people who are, are much kind of cleverer than I, which isn't a difficult thing. Who will, oh, you yeah. understand yourself. <laughs> No, no, it's true. It's true. It was a kind of terminology that I've kind of been interested in for, for a long time and, and kind of explored. But, but when I explored it, I actually realized that it is genuinely how I think I like to lead people. It's mm -hmm. kind of a very kind of authentic servant leadership type approach where you really are there to to understand the people that you're working with and the approach that you take so all sorts of things that i could be better at but i pride myself on certain elements of, of leadership that i'm able yeah. to to provide in terms of being able to connect with people provide the opportunity to to really provide a level of coaching for people that allows them to, to really ensure that they're doing the best work and human leadership is, is really about that concept. It's about the idea of, of family, the idea of even extending love to people and, and love in a way that's about really bringing your heart to what you're doing and moving away from so much reliance on kind of rational, rational head type thinking. Yeah. And these are terms that don't always get traction with people, but it's a way of... Love kind of, in the workplace? <laughs> embrace using that kind of word again, kind of a different approach to how you connect with people. Mm. And I, I think it is starting to get some, some traction and that's encouraging. I think one of the uh, examples would be just thinking about how people respond to this different situation that we're in now. And there's lots been written about the need for for people to demonstrate empathy at this time and actually a thread on on LinkedIn and Twitter about all of our job titles should change to be the chief empathy officer, which I think is a, a fantastic phrase and a fantastic way of looking at it. And that's essentially showing compassion. And that's about being there for your people. And people mm. think that empathy is about a kind of soft skill of just caring and kind of tilting our head and just kind of being very tree hugging about it. And it's not, it's about having a demonstration of, of understanding and listening and not having any kind of judgment around people and how they're feeling and people want to be heard. So I think these characteristics around human leadership are really the things that we need to dial into at this time. Yeah. But I, my argument or my suggestion would be that they extend far beyond this time as well and will allow organizations to build a lot more traction. So even talking about human-centered leadership, human leadership, am I right? What's the concept? What's the better concept? Is it human-centered leadership or human leadership? It's called different things, to be honest. Okay. It? I mean, it's kind of human leadership is how I refer to it. I think okay. human-centric leadership, there's, there's lots of different elements to the terminology. Okay. okay. So just as leadership is evolving to even be more human-centered and like I mentioned, as a change leader, people first, that's key. So I'm Glad we're on that same page when yeah, we see things. No arguments, but... <laughs> how is the workplace and not just leadership, how is that evolving for people when we talk about future of work? What's the percentage of skills that are moving to some of this soft skills, some of this non-technical skills versus what we put a lot of emphasis on right now? Or 
I don't know if we still put a lot of emphasis on it. I'd hope that we're moving away more from that technical and specialization. Where do you see the future of work going with all of what's happening right now and the need for things to see accelerated? It seems yeah. to be at an accelerated pace right now. Yeah, that's no, it's a great question. I mean, I think going back to your, your point around technology and AI and all of the different machine learning and virtual reality and augmented reality, all the different things that are going on, they're going to really provide an opportunity to, to kind of take a lot of those kind of transactional repetitive exercises that many people find themselves doing in their jobs. And that really does then allow the opportunity to, to kind of illuminate or highlight or amplify some of these human leadership skills or these human skills. Mm. So I think they're going to become the, the differentiator. That's, I imagine, in time, maybe way beyond my lifetime. But if I think about my kids going into work, that might become different in the future. Yeah. I think in, in my lifetime, I think there's the opportunity to, to kind of really think about the, the human skills that we bring. So the, the opportunity to to be creative and to be innovative and to demonstrate a level of authentic compassion. I think all those mm-hmm. things will be there. And the, the the World Economic Forum, I'm not sure if you've seen it, but they would go through a process a couple of years ago where they essentially looked at the way in which jobs are going to change and those jobs that are going to kind of remain, the jobs mm. that are going to unfortunately start to be removed and the jobs that would continue. Um, sorry, the jobs that would evolve, the new jobs. And lots of the jobs that remain were around a lot of those people-centric type roles. Yes. People to connect. Yeah, things like creativity, empathy, communications. A lot of it was very people-centered because we are going to have a lot of things becoming more automated, robotic, RPA, all of those terms. And this crisis we're going through at the moment and not sure when it's going to end is actually leveraging or bringing closer the need to test out some of these things. Because when I look at it, I see situations whereby people are now using robotics. People are now using robots in hospitals to do things (laughs) that weren't done. People are testing AI and in different ways to help track the trend with COVID, all of that data analysis. And that's why I say it's kind of accelerated some of the things that are happening. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I think there's definitely uh, an opportunity to, to kind of, really think about how you respond to those things. But I, you know, I think it's the the human leadership skills that are going to allow organizations to take some of those technologies. And, and they're amazing. There's some real things that are going to bring kind of real value. They're going to literally save lives in many respects, but mm. bring that technology, but make sure it's implemented in the right way. So there's a huge amount of fear that people have in technology. There's a an interesting statistics that I always remember from Pew Research that shows that 70% of American citizens are scared that robots are going to take over their lives. So it feels <laughs> like a kind of you know a movie that we should be watching at this time on Netflix. But it's kind of the the, the fact people have fear around some of this technology, I think, needs to, to be taken in, into consideration so that we're introducing new technology in a very understanding and thoughtful way. Mm-hmm, for sure. One of the things that we talk about at the change leadership a lot is a new paradigm of what change leadership should look like. We say change leadership is no longer for a select few. It's no longer for people with the title as change leaders or people with the title as leaders or people in a position of authority. We say change leadership is for everybody. Because sometimes you tell somebody who may not be in a position of authority about being a change leader, and they feel that that change leader title is reserved for somebody who is in authority (laughs) type of thing. What can you say to somebody out there to say, you know what, you have the power regardless of if you're feeling powerless that you don't have that title? I think, I think it's a, a great message that, that you're giving to people to ensure that they, they understand that they have that accountability. I think a, an organization which is going to, to really represent some of the characteristics that, that I think are important would, would have people who feel very empowered. I think that isn't always easy. It feels like one of those things that's easy to say, but in the reality of a situation where somebody perhaps is is struggling or or somebody may feel as though they're not being heard by their leader uh, or maybe they haven't been heard by a previous leader and they've struggled to to really find their own voice in an organization i think that has to be drawn out and i think again the 
if there's anything you can do in an organization, recognizing that we're having to prioritize all of the time is to invest in your leaders. Ensure that your leaders understand what these qualities are that we've been talking about today, understand what their role is in driving change. And I, and I agree with you 100%. That's part of their, their job. And it's a key part of their job. Then I think that's what's going to allow people to feel as though they have that have a voice in the organization and feel that mm. sense of empowerment and accountability. And mm. that can feel super satisfying. That can feel as though you're, you're then making a difference. You're you're not just doing your job, you're fulfilling your purpose, which can feel much more uh, fulfilling for people, I think. Okay. And what final thoughts do you have for someone listening to us today or watching this video? What would you like to say to them? Well, I think it's, we are in a crazy time and I think it's, it's very unsettling. I, I just encourage people to, to really take the time to do a couple of things. I think one okay. is to, to kind of take care of themselves and take care of those who are around them. So going back to that point around compassion and empathy, mm. I think there's a lot that people can do there for themselves and for others. And I think the other thing is perhaps to think about where there is opportunity here. Mm. Like anything, we're going through a, a, a dark time in many respects, but the idea of finding the silver lining, I think is really important. Mm. So at any level, be it at an individual level, be it at an organizational level, mm. where are you gonna find the opportunity here? What is that opportunity? What is it you can get excited about? And I think that starts to give people hope. And I think yeah. hope is an important thing for us at this stage. Yeah, I like that, hope. And that's what as leaders we need to be doing for our teams, our colleagues, even our bosses, because you can lead from the top, you can lead from the bottom, you can lead from the side. Mm -hmm. so wherever it is, it's inspire hope. Exactly. When you give people hope, they have something to look forward to. So I love that hope. I love that thought. I'm going into the rest of, of the next few days thinking about hope. I'm going to hold on to <laughs> How can people connect with you? I know you have some great blogs out there and some podcasts. What's the best way for someone to connect yeah, to you? There's a number of different things going on. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Twitter. Um, I do a podcast. I'm also very involved with a, a co-founder running a community called Future Forward, which is all around helping if you're specifically within the HR community, helping the HR community to, to really leverage the future of work. So that, a website there is futureforward.com. And I mean, I guess the, the, the probably easy one-stop shop would probably be my website, which is getradioproject.com. So there's lots of things going on. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'd be excited to connect with anybody who's interested in yeah. I, and I, yeah, and I definitely think you have so many resources there that people can tap into to help with leading and driving change in this current environment. And it's time for us to even start thinking going forward, yeah. not just the present. We have to start thinking about what the future is going to look like. I appreciate your time today. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mark, for being part of our Change Leadership Conversations. Thank you, Mark. Thank you.